Well, Corp's 100th game this week. It's more than 10 years now since you were first rookie listed by the club. What does it mean now to finally reach that milestone? Uh, yeah, so I'm sure it's something I'll look back on um, when everything's done and dusted and I'll be very, very proud of it. Um, 10 years is a long time to get to 100 games, so uh, yeah, it's taken me a while and um, I think it'll probably mean more to me than a lot of other guys who've probably uh, reached it a bit easier than, than what I have, so yeah, I think, as I said, when it's all done and dusted, I'll be very proud. You were here for a year in 2003, how do you look, up, look back on that time now? Yeah, I just, I probably can't remember too much, but uh, Gary Ayres was coach at the time and uh, yeah, I was just new into the system straight out of school and um, I suppose I just soaked in everything that I could and you know, there were some guys at the club at that time who uh, I really looked up to and were idols for me and um, it was just a bit of a buzz to be around them and um, it happened. You know, the year was over before I uh, really knew it and um, I was in and out before uh, I could really sort of take it all in. You went back to Westies after being delisted. How did you approach those two years? Yeah, I, I think I just um, enjoyed my footy and, um, you know, I loved being at Westies and the guys there were great and uh, Sean Wren was the coach at the time and I had a lot of time for any. He was brilliant. Um, he was a big part of... Um, well, I was able to get back in fact so I just enjoyed my footy there and um, and uh, kept working at it and you know, things paid off. What were you doing away from the footy field at that time? Were you working or studying? I was at TAFE at the time doing electrical engineering course and uh, I just sort of finished it just as um, I sort of came back here and um, was all ready to uh, start work at uh, ETSA and then about two days before I was going to start, I was drafted here, so yeah, that put a stop to that. Your fitness was the concern at that stage. How did your approach to training change? Yeah, I don't know if my approach to training changed much. I felt like I, you know, I always wanted to work hard and get the best out of myself, but I probably did things a bit smarter and and um, worked out, um, you know, how to get better in areas that I was sort of deficient in. So got picked up again in the pre-season draft ahead of the 2006 season. How was your mindset different coming into the club for the second time? Yeah, I think um, I think I sort of came in with a mindset like I knew I was ready for AFL. Like I'd spent those two years at the SNFL and watched the guys running around at the AFL level and felt like, you know, I, I can do what the guys at that level are doing. And I came in confident in my ability and confident in it. Um, the work that I'd sort of done up to that point in trying to, you know, get better in areas and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I came back probably a different attitude um, compared to when I was a rookie and felt like I was ready to go. You had a breakout year in 09, playing every game, second in the club champ, leading goal kicker, but two years after that, pretty interrupted with injury. How frustrating have the previous two seasons been? Yeah, it's been really disappointing, you know, up until that season I'd sort of kept building and building and, um, you know, as you said, had a had a reasonable year that year, so um, to feel like I've sort of taken a bit of a step back with injuries and um, probably the form hasn't been um, as good as what I would have liked, so um, it's been a little bit disappointing and frustrating, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm still working hard and trying to work on areas that um, I know I need to improve in and, um, as I said before, probably um, having a, a greater appreciation for each game that I do get now and, and making the most of each game. You've obviously had the shoulder, hamstring, knee, pelvis, the brain bruising there, which I think we've forgotten about for a little while and to yeah. look back on. What was the lowest point in all that? Um, I think probably the second time I did my shoulder was um, pretty devastating. Um, just probably because I thought that was behind me and, I, and I've done a lot of work and really it was not even in at any part of my thinking whatsoever that anything could have gone wrong with my shoulder ever again so um, that was a, a big blow and then obviously that meant the rest of my year was pretty much over so um, 
that was a yeah, tough pill to swallow. Those are the low points, obviously. What have been the most memorable moments in the first 99 games? Yeah, I'll, well, probably the debut game was um, pretty special, uh, knowing that I had worked hard and achieved a, a lifelong dream. I've wanted to play AFL since I was a kid, so um, that was obviously pretty special. And I think just um, probably playing in the finals early on in my career, we had a, a really good finals win over Fremantle. Um, at home, which was fantastic, and then in 2009 when we played Essendon and had a really good win in the, over them in the finals as well, that was pretty special. You've been involved with the Crows Foundation for a few years now. What made you want to become involved in that? Yeah, I, I was approached by the club, and um, you know, it seemed like a really good fit, and uh, I was um, really keen to help out. You know, the, the Crows Foundation do a lot of work with. You know, the kids of South Australia and that um, sort of fit in with me really well and um, to be able to you know, give back to the community a little bit is, is really important because we are in a privileged position so um, yeah I feel like we're able to do some some worthwhile things um, through the foundation. Does your work with the foundation help put things in footy in perspective a little bit? Yeah certainly when you go out and see some of the kids who are doing it pretty tough and who haven't had you know the support in their life like probably a lot of us as footballers have had um, yeah it can certainly put things into perspective and um, to put a smile on their face is, is um, really rewarding. Your skills are one of the features of your game, has that always come naturally to you? Um, I think you could probably say it's come naturally because I think I just had a footy in my hands you know from about the time I could walk so um, you know, I was always out in the backyard kicking the footy and um, you know, loved getting out there and playing with my brothers and even just kicking around by myself. So uh, I suppose, you know, since I've come through the ranks and that sort of thing, it's, it's felt like I've never really had to, uh, you know, work as hard as probably what other guys who have picked up the game of football a lot later in their life. Can you tell us a bit about your family background, the Port Pleasure name? Yeah, poor pleasure, it's Ukrainian. Um, my dad's parents came from the Ukraine in the uh, Second World War and uh, came out to Australia and um, yeah, they, they actually came out with, uh, my grandpa came out with his brother and um, uh, they uh, disagreed on the uh, English spelling of poor pleasure. So, we spelt it with a Z and they spelt it with a C. And, um, obviously being Ukrainian stubborn men that they are, that's, uh, they both went their separate ways and both thought they were right. And off the field we hear you're a pretty good cook, you fancy your skills in the kitchen, making your own ice cream as well. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I enjoy getting in the kitchen and trying out a different, you know, different recipes and that sort of thing. And yeah, have made ice cream on the odd occasion and uh, have had good reports and uh, yeah, so far so good. Everyone seems to like what I do in there. You pretty fussy with your diet normally? Yeah, I am. Um, I think that probably came back to when I was delisted, trying to look for an edge in different areas and I sort of thought diet was an area where I could probably um, do things a bit better and uh, start to look into things myself and um, became um, pretty meticulous in some areas and uh, you know, it's worked for me so far. I've uh, managed to keep live and the skin folds crew uh, away from from me and any any trouble in that area. So, yeah. What are some of the things that you changed, or do the boys get stuck into you? Do you measure everything? How? Yeah, I've, no, I've, I just got a bit of an alternative view about. Um, I think me and Kurt Tippett are a bit on the same page with our uh, alternative uh, sort of healthy eating habits and uh, yeah, a few of the boys like to get stuck into us but that's alright. You often sit next to Sando on the bus on the interstate games, how did that tradition come about? Yeah, um, I, uh, well, I didn't always sit up the front of the bus um, and be the coach's pet, I just used to sit you know, with the boys um, as per usual but uh, I found that sitting on the bus made me um, a bit uh, sort of travel sick and uh, I realised that sitting up the bus, up the front of the bus was um, 
yeah, made, made that um, a bit less of a problem. So, um, yeah, Sando said at the start of the year that we'll uh, sit together for the whole year and we've kept it up so far. So uh, hopefully I can keep in his good books and, um, and yeah, keep the tradition going. You mentioned that you idolised some of the Crows players when you first came into the club. Who were your footy idols growing up? Uh, I was a Hawthorne supporter growing up, so Jason Dunstall was my just ultimate football hero. I just loved everything he did, and uh, I remember following him from a very young age. And um, probably as I grew older, I started to look at some guys who um, I enjoyed the way they played the game. And Darren Jalen was another one of them who uh, I followed pretty closely. You know, firstly at Hawthorne, and then when he came to the Crows, I still loved. You know, the way he played and uh, yeah, enjoyed everything he did on the field. Second half of the season, what are your goals from a personal perspective? Yeah, I think just to um, probably get a bit more consistency in my game and start to um, hit some of the form that I had, you know, a few years ago, start to um, be a bit more damaging, um, you know, damaging member for the team and um, just keep, you know, um, pushing the boys in that direction of uh, making sure we're playing some good footy and being a, a, you know, a strong member in that group, hopefully pushing to finals.